costs you to give. Or you can send a donation by post. It's checks and postal orders only, please, to Anne Gregg, The London Connection, P.O. Box 7, London W36XJ. That's Anne Gregg, The London Connection, P.O. Box 7, London W36XJ. The address is also in Radio Times and on page 627 of CFAX. In 15 minutes, Songs of Praise for Easter comes live from Milton Keynes as Debbie Thrower joins the congregation of the town's brand new church, the City Church of Christ the Cornerstone. Join Julia McKenzie, Michelle Wu, and Lloyd Gorsman as we start our search for the Master Chef of Britain 1992. With wonderful chefs, great guests, and some truly amazing contestants. So join us in our three-month search for the best amateur cook in Great Britain. Master Chef, next Sunday afternoon, 10 to 5. Now, on BBC One at 6.25, the news with Moira Stewart. Police investigating the murder of a four-year-old boy have made an arrest. Matthew Robinson's body was found on Wednesday in the bedroom of the boarding house where he lived. Labour's John Prescott has said trade union leaders tried to fix the leadership election with a nod and a wink. And the Afghan rebel leaders have formed a coalition to try to bring peace to the country. Good evening. A 25-year-old man has been arrested in connection with the murder of four-year-old Matthew Robinson who was sexually assaulted and strangled at his parents' boarding house in Plymouth. Police say the arrested man, who's single and unemployed, was a former tenant at the boarding house. The arrest comes after four days of intensive inquiries by up to 60 police officers. The 25-year-old unemployed bachelor was this morning brought here to Plymouth's Charles Cross police station, from where a special incident room has been operating. Detectives say the man, who hasn't been named, is not originally from Plymouth. But they have said he was a former tenant at the lodging house where four-year-old Matthew Robinson was found sexually assaulted and strangled on Wednesday morning. The body of the proprietor's son was found in his bunk bed on the first floor by his nine-year-old brother. At first it was thought the child had been a cot death victim, but a post-mortem later revealed the true cause of death. Detectives have since been interviewing tenants who were staying at the lodging house on the night of Matthew's death and using rent book details to trace others who have been staying there recently. A woman who's been held by police investigating the murder of an army recruiting sergeant in Derby will appear in court tomorrow charged with offences under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Two other people who were detained at Saltby in Leicestershire have been released without charge. They were arrested by armed police on Friday, apparently in connection with the killing. There have been more accusations that trade union leaders tried to propel John Smith into the leadership of the Labour Party before a proper contest is held. John Prescott, a candidate for the deputy leadership, claimed that agreements were reached with a nod and a wink that could have settled the matter before MPs had even met. Both the serious contenders Those for the Labour leadership agree there must be a long, hard look at the well, power well. the unions wield within the party. But there's a more there. immediate problem, the growing anger on the left that the big unions were so quick to throw their weight behind John Smith, who some believe now has an unstoppable momentum in his campaign to take over from Neil Kinnock. One contender for the deputy leadership, John Prescott, says the whole system is wrong. The possibility still exists in, in this way that a number of the candidates might not even get into the field. Now, that is not the way to have a good democratic process, and it started off as if somehow there was a nod and a wink, an agreement between people, you have this, we'll have that. It didn't do the Labour Party any good. And a left-wing pressure group, which says it has the support of 30 MPs, is making a similar attack. What's happening at the moment in, is not an election, it's a stitcher. The only people who can sort this out are John Smith, Brian Gould and Ken Livingstone. They've got to tell the Union General Secretaries, if you don't ballot your members, then don't vote. As the contest for the deputy leadership hots up, Margaret Beckett has issued her manifesto. During the election and well before it, she worked closely with John Smith in Labour's shadow treasury team. Now she's stressing that that relationship could continue in the future, 
she says she could work constructively alongside Mr Smith. That will be taken by some as a dig at Brian Gould, who's contesting both the leadership and the deputy's job. His supporters say despite stark differences with Mr Smith over Europe and taxation, they could eventually work well together. The largest teachers' union, the NUT, looks set for a confrontation with the government over a new scheme in England and Wales to assess classroom performance. The union's conference has heard calls for teachers to boycott the scheme. Some delegates said it would be used to victimise teachers and keep their wages down. The government's scheme for assessing teachers' classroom performance began last September. The teacher unions fear appraisal, as it's known, will be used to determine pay levels and to discipline or even dismiss staff. They'll only support it as a method of professional development. The NUT's left wing wants to boycott unacceptable schemes. Appraisal will be used by unscrupulous head teachers, desperate governors and authorities who are desperate to lose jobs. It will be used, as everything else has been by the Tories, in education to ensure a climate of suspicion and demoralisation. The leadership believes a boycott will leave NUT members isolated from other teachers. But it appears to have failed to stop the boycott vote going ahead, although the show of hands was too close to call and the formal result won't be known until tomorrow. Earlier, delegates voted for a campaign, including possible strikes, to improve educational provision for children with special needs. Conference, the time has come when our sentiments, our well-meant words, are not enough. It is time to build a campaign with parents. It is time to take action to defend pupils with special educational needs. There was also a call for all children with disabilities to be taught in mainstream schools, but this was narrowly defeated by those who argued that a mixture of special schools and integration was the right approach. The Afghan rebel leader, Ahmed Shah Massoud, has been named leader of a new guerrilla coalition. As the regime in Kabul crumbles, he has promised not to enter the capital until a new Mujahideen government is installed. His new Islamic Jihad Council does not include southern hardliners. They're still threatening Kabul. The capture of the important city of Jalalabad is among the successes claimed by the guerrillas today. These people do not yet control Kabul. That is now just a matter of time. Old enemies have come together. Rebels and government commanders have joined.